Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer. I head sustainability at Convoy. Thank you for tuning into our series, The Business of Sustainability, where you'll hear from sustainability leaders on how they've transformed their corporate cultures, demonstrated material value, and really show that businesses can be sustainable in addition to driving real business impact. Today, I'm very excited to have Danica Padilla here. She is the Director of Social Impact at Meow Wolf. Hi, Danica, welcome. Thanks, Jennifer, so glad to be here. Yes, yeah, so well, I'm looking forward to kicking off this conversation. Unfortunately, I have not been to Mount Wolf before, even though I have driven through Santa Fe many times. So hopefully in the future, this will be even uh, more exciting to, to visit the space once it's open again. Absolutely, we'd love to have you. Um, and for, for our viewers who, who don't know who we are, uh, we're a startup company based in Santa Fe, New Mexico. We build immersive and entertaining art experiences for the all ages to enjoy. And we're currently expanding our work into Las Vegas, Nevada and Denver, Colorado. Um, and really excited to bring uh, a new type of experience to, to people. Um, it's not your typical museum. It's a little bit different, um, much more about exploration and play. And we are very excited uh, to be here with you and looking forward to talking about sustainability. I love that. Well, Danica, as the Director of Social Impact, could you share more about what that means in terms of your roles and responsibilities? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I am very lucky uh, to you know, be working with a certified B Corporation. Um, so in, in this role, uh, I've been here for about two and a half years and have really been expanding uh, our work to be a more responsible business. Um, we work in, you know, social, social benefit, so, you know, community investments. Um, we also work on, like, economic benefit for our communities. Uh, so really looking at our supply chain um, in ways that we can make sure we're giving back to our local communities. Um, and then we do have that environmental piece. And so, you know, our, our work is really expanding. Um, Meow Wolf is about four years old as a company, so we're still relatively young. And I would say, you know, we're really just beginning our journey. And, you know, we have a small and lean team uh, as, you know, COVID times, uh, you know, make, make that happen. Um, you know, but we're really, really working to expand our presence and really make sure that the arts, uh, you know, can give back. And our work focuses on supporting historically marginalized communities. I see. And how does Meow Wolf value sustainability? Clearly, there is some importance when you are a B Corp and you yourself uh, have a role specifically focused on this. How does the business and organization think about the value there? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, as, as I mentioned, we are a certified B Corporation. And for folks that don't know about B Corps, uh, we have a triple bottom line of supporting uh, social, uh, social, economic, and environmental benefit for our communities. Um, so, you know, that, that is ingrained in our business. And, you know, we really see the value um, that this sets us apart from our competitors. Uh, this helps us to attract talent. Um, you know, it really helps us to do what's right. And, you know, being a B Corp uh, really guides us in that effort. And, it, you know, it's not just about what we're doing as a company. It's also about what the community and what the B Corp community is doing. And so we learn a lot from um, a lot of the businesses that we work with. Um, you know, Towski Valley is, is one of our neighbors that's a certified, they're the, the only certified B Corp that's a ski valley. Um, so we learn a lot from those businesses. Um, and in a typical business, uh, you know, a typical business atmosphere, you know, there's a lot of competition. But what we really see is that B Corps are supporting each other and are really, really focused on um, moving the needle forward together. I see. And you mentioned in the world of sustainability at Meow Wolf, there are a lot of different areas that you're focused on, whether it's the social impact side, the economic impact, the communities around you, and then also the environmental side. How do you determine which sustainability initiatives to focus on when it, it is so broad for you? 
Yeah, it's very challenging. Um, you know, and we are, we're a startup, you know, we haven't been in business for that long and, you know, we are really working to prove our business model out. Um, so at this point, you know, we really don't focus initiatives, um, that are, are costly and can be really expensive. So we try and focus currently on items that all have low cost and high long-term impact, um, and so, you know, kind of what that looks like, uh, you know, is, is using the B Corp assessment as our guide. And again, I'm saying B Corp a lot because it, it is really, really beneficial and valuable to our company um, because the assessment really lays out, like, here's where you start. You start with an initial assessment of your organization. You know, then you can set reduction targets and then you look at your supply chain. And so we're really in that, um, you know, looking internal piece at this moment and using our staff and our resources, um, you know, to track and understand where we're at and where we can be. I think that's really what, what we're focused on, um, you know, are setting some of those values now so that we can understand where, where can we be in five years? You know, where should our Las Vegas exhibition be? Um, you know, because our company, you know, we change uh, like, a, like a, you know, startup, you know, we change every six months, you know, it's a different place, it's a different atmosphere. And so, you know, we're really focused on those like internal tracking mechanisms and setting them up uh, right to begin with. Could you share more on what that internal tracking mechanism looks like? Is it a, a scorecard or a dashboard, some Excel spreadsheets? I think that's just such a key question that a lot of companies and even sustainable leaders are still trying to determine. How do you measure that progress from where you are today against where you want to be? Yeah, I mean, we're using uh, spreadsheets currently. We use a lot of Google Docs. Uh, and again, it's really, um, you know, looking at the measurements that we can make, uh, you know, because it, it is challenging. You know, we have a lot of new team members, you know, a lot of different things happening. And so we're looking big picture. You know, we want to be tracking our water usage. Um, and so we currently have, you know, the, the spreadsheet set up that is, you know, looking at um, the water usage at all of our facilities facilities every month. So we have a team member that goes in every month and, and inserts those numbers just from our bill, right? Like you get a water bill every month. It's that easy. You just go in and track it. Um, so spreadsheets, um, you know, I think it's also about conversations with our team and, you know, really learning because in, in my role, you know, I'm, I'm not a direct artist. I don't know what items we're purchasing. Um, you know, I don't know what, like what types of sustainability things we can implement within our actual production. Um, and so that is something that we're currently working on with our uh, artistic design and production department. Um, you know, and so it is, you know, just kind of that initial assessment. And it, I'd say it's more um, qualitative that we're, you know, kind of looking at products like we're getting literal like pictures of products um, that have, you know, what, like where they're sourced from, you know, where, like how much water they use and really just understanding, you know, where, where we're at. But it's a lot of spreadsheets and a lot of folks, a lot of different folks within our organization that are being involved. And I think that's really, really important um, that it doesn't live with just one person or one department. It really is, you know, all of us. Um, that, that need to be working on this. And so that's one of our, our big, excuse me, one of our big goals that we have. That's, oh, that's great. So as you um, speak to some of your goals, what is your top sustainability priority for the next six months, say? Yeah, I mean, as you can imagine, we have a lot going on. We've got Vegas and Denver set to open next year. Um, and so, you know, kind of our top priority is getting some of these tracking systems ready to go before we open those exhibitions. Um, so it is, you know, more plug and play. And it's not like everybody has to set up a new spreadsheet or, you know, this or that. Um, and so, yeah, I'd say that top priority is really monitoring our water waste and energy use um, at our facilities here in Santa Fe and then setting up the mechanisms to do that in those new places. Um, and that our second priority uh, is currently, we are really working to incorporate green building design into our new facilities. Um, 
So that can include everything from like the, the, uh, the land parcel that we select, uh, the material that we use to actually like, you know, core and shell build the building. Um, that also is like, you know, the green features, like, you know, all of our facilities are using 100% LED lighting. Um, all of our buildings are going to have, um, low, you know, low flow uh, toilets and faucets. Um, and so we're looking at those standards that can go into every single building. Um, so again, it's not, it's, you know, it's not like somebody has to make a decision. It's like, hey, here's, here's the blueprint. You know, here's, here's what we need to incorporate, um, at least at this moment. And so, you know, that's really important for us to kind of set those up to begin with. Um, and again, it's working across so many different teams to understand, you know, what, what can we do in facilities? What can we do in production? What can we do in the, you know, design of the building? So mm -hmm. it's just really, you know, understanding and assessing where we're at. Sure. And one thing that I was looking at uh, as I was learning more about Malwoof or, or staying up to date is I saw one of your most recent exhibits is actually one that turns trash into art. Could you just share more about that one? Oh, it's such a beautiful piece. I just got to see it yesterday in person. It's amazing. Um, but, uh, you know, many people don't know that Meow Wolf's original work really came from found and recycled materials. Um, we, we work to continue that as much as possible, um, even with changing requirements. If you've never built to fire code, oh my gosh, it's very challenging. Um, but this new project is Trash Temple and is located in the House of Eternal Return in Santa Fe. And it comes to us from a couple of artists, Corinne Luperfito and Damon Williams. Um, we have been collaborating with Corinne for um, a few years with her group Pussy Powerhouse at our Taos Vortex Festival. And uh, we brought her in, uh, her and Damon. Um, this is her first permanent installation and it is also their first collaboration together. Um, but the artwork uh, is all found materials, found in, and or recycled. Um, it's mostly found after thinking about it. It is literally like mostly found materials and donated materials. Um, and so, you know, both of the artists are environmentalists um, who use that, you know, found, found and recycled materials in their everyday work. And, um, you know, Trash Temple has no glue. Uh, it uses screws. Um, it uses only free or recycled paint as well. Um, and so literally everything that you see in there, you know, is, is very uh, cautious of the environment. And her work really speaks to the moment that we're in as, as a world, um, you know, with our landfills filling up, with our recycling, you know, not being recycled anymore, um, you know, with trash piling up in our oceans and the real possibility of climate change. Well, it's really happening. Um, and so, you know, her work is giving new life to trash and is really, um, you know, a physical relic of the garbage, um, you know, garbage in our life in hopes that we can really reevaluate our relationship with waste and, um, you know, really as a society change our, our ways. I well, can't wait to see it. I'm, I'm glad to hear that it's permanent. Uh, and I, I, I was doing some more research uh, online specifically. And I think another piece that I thought was very relevant to our world today is this mask. So I saw, and I bought one on the website because these days you can't have too many masks. But this one here, it was buy one, donate one, where one was going to be donated to indigenous communities. How did this project come about? So yeah, as, as soon as COVID hit, we are really seeing that our indigenous communities in New Mexico were being hit by you know, a higher rate um, and that you know, climate justice and environmental justice is, is very real and related to this topic. Um, and so you know, we wanted to take action. So immediately we started, um, you know, looking at ways, you know, could we produce PPE, um, so personal protective equipment. Um, so we worked with one of our local hospitals, Christus St. Vincent, on, on a pilot project. Uh, we produced uh, 12 desk shields for them in our fabrication studio. 
And, you know, we kind of saw that producing that large scale PPE was probably not something that we should get into, um, but that we can do smaller things to support the, the indigenous community in particular. Um, and so we started supplies drives with our staff um, and we donated um, our own KN95 masks and gloves that we had in stock. We had staff, you know, getting um, toiletries and, and food supplies. And so, We've been able to support, uh, you know, the Pueblo of Cochiti, the Pueblo of Jemez, uh, the Santa Fe Indian Center, and then, you know, the Navajo Nation. So, you know, the Navajo Nation had one of the highest rates of COVID in the country. Um, and so, you know, we really reached out to them and some of our local partners to see where, where, where were things needed the most. Um, and definitely, you know, the Navajo Nation is still in need. Um, you know, many folks out there don't have access to clean drinking water, um, you know, to wash their hands or even to drink with. And so it really is a public health crisis. Um, so our team, uh, you know, decided to, uh, well, we're not manufacturing the beautiful mask that you're wearing. Um, we are purchasing them local and having them made. Um, but we decided that we wanted to donate one mask for everyone sold. Um, so we've been able to donate over 1300 masks and gaiters to the Navajo Nation. Um, and again, those are going directly to um, the Indian health centers that, that are in need the most and going to families and elders and so many folks, you know, it's just one way that we can give back. Um, you know, we're not able to do a lot of funding at this moment. And so we really are looking at other ways and being creative about what we can do. Well, I think everything makes a difference. So congratulations on, on doing that. So one last question before we wrap up. What do you think it's going to take for more companies to make larger investments in sustainability? I think you proved that as a startup, you can still take sustainability actions as a part of your company while you're looking to grow and expand. It's not a trade-off to say only focus on sustainability or only focus on business growth. What right. advice do you have for other companies? I mean, definitely to start early, you know, as early as possible. Um, and I think that it's really going to take long term investments, you know, whether those investments are coming from companies or government or, you know, whoever else, private funders, uh, it costs money to do this work, right? Um, you know, it costs money to hire the staff to create these systems. Um, and so, you know, we're really lucky that, you know, Meow Wolf's board of directors and leadership continually invest in and support this work. Um, you know, that, that rising cost of doing business is real. And so, you know, I think it's going to take a lot of investments from, from many different places and funders. Um, and I think it's also going to take the tools, right? Like if we can create, and that's something that the B Corp community is actively working on, um, are tools that you can better use to, you know, assess your impact, to set your goals. Um, and I definitely encourage, you know, any business to check out that uh, B impact assessment um, and just start. Right. It, it starts with just an understanding of, of where you are, where you want to be. Um, and we're really looking at our supply chain as, as one of the biggest places for those critical investments in the future. Awesome. Well, thank you, Danica, so much for your time today. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Looking forward to seeing you more.